Hi everyone and welcome to the Imagining a New We video blog with me, Dr. Samantha Cotrera, a video series that's designed to help history teachers and other uh, history and heritage educators teach history in ways that are more transformative, meaningful, and inclusive for their students. And every once in a while I'll do a little segment called Did You Know About? in which I uh, uh, ask you if you know about particular types of history and so uh, with the idea that you can be able to bring some of these ideas and resources into your classroom. And today in honor of Louis Royale Day in Manitoba and Family Day uh, pretty much for the rest of Canada, I am going to do one about Louis Royale. Did you know about the women in Louis Royale's life? Because if you read this book, you would not. <laughs> Chester Brown's Louis Royale, a comic strip biography, is a very popular teaching tool in classrooms across Canada because it is this cool graphic representation of the life of Louis Royale. It was published in the early 2000s. There's kind of different publishing dates because the cartoonist Chester Brown did like cartoon strips and then he did a hardcover book and then he did a softcover book. But when it came out throughout its, its whole life, it has received such praise about what it does in terms of teaching Canadian history. And, uh, and so a lot of people like to use it in their classrooms, which is, which is great. But it's also terrible. <laughs> I hate this book so much. I hate this book so much. And I love graphic, I, I love graphic novels. And I've done a lot of work um, about graphic novels and about them as teaching tools. But this one I cannot stand. I read this for the first time in a class that was saying like, here is a way to do history differently that, that centers, um, that, that centers Métis people and Indigenous voices in a much more prominent way. In fact, it does it so much it could be a decolonizing history. That was how I was, I was introduced to it. And I read it and I was like, are you kidding? This is the most sexist book I have ever read. <laughs> it is so sexist. Um, it, it, it hardly shows women at all, and when it shows women, it shows them in such terrible, terrible ways. So in this short video today, I'm going to talk about things that I saw when I read this for the first time. And I'm going to uh, identify some uh, links and some other resources that can help you bring these histories of women into your, uh, your, your history teaching when you talk about Louis Royale because, in fact, the women of Royale's life were very important to him uh, and for the Red River community. And to not talk about them and to not kind of center these histories when we learn about someone like Louis Royale does a real disservice to the actual life that he led and the lives that people uh, led around him. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't read it, that's that's fine. Um, uh, I think there's some of the resources and things that will help you as well. If you if you have read it, you'll know that it is separated into a series of. Oh, I didn't even mean to uh, open it to this page because I highlighted all the women. I'm getting to that in a second. Uh, it is separated into these tiny little cells. There's six cells per page. And uh, what I did was I did go through and highlight all the women, and I found that um, uh, only 3% of all of these cells, all of the, those little boxes in Louis Royale, a comic book, a uh, comic strip bibliography, include an illustration of women, and, oh, and half of those are women in group scenes, which means that only 1.5 uh, of the cells, or 20 cells, and when I say cells, I mean these little uh, these little boxes here, right? 
um, 20 cells actually feature an individual woman in this whole big long book about Louis Rael's life. 20 cells. And that's extraordinarily frustrating because the source material that Chester Brown used for a Louis Rael bibliography was Maggie Siggins' Rael, A Life of Rebellion. Actually, let me go get it for you. And like magic, I'm back with the book. Uh, Maggie Siggins' uh, Riel, A Life of Rebellion uh, is not a history of women during this time period. It is very much a biography of Louis Riel, but she writes a history that is bustling with people and places that are teeming with life. Um, her biography emphasizes the social, cultural, political climate that guided Riel's life. And so while her book is not about women, Women are in that book because women were in the past. It is so, um, it, it has been so easy throughout history to be like, women weren't there, women were not important, but that's because of how history has been written. And so this book uh, did a really great job of bringing women into the story. This book, this book did not. Now, you can see that I had this book as well, March, book one, um, a biography of John Lewis. This is an American book um, in my hand. And that's because this is a graphic novel, too, that doesn't actually isolate women to the sidelines. They are drawn into history as really central players. But in this book, the one that we keep using to teach Louis Rahel, they are completely absent. Well, actually not completely absent. You can see women or not see women in three different ways in this book. And in this short video, I want to go through them really quickly and highlight some resources that you can use to help augment your teaching, whether you use that book or not, um, to bring women more into the story. So when we see women in the Chester Brown's Louis Royale, we see them in two different ways. Uh, the first way is as passive helpmates, so as, as, as just characters that are helping the men do the main action of what needs to be done. And one way we can see this is on page 39 of the softcover book where we see a woman, we don't even see her face, she's just bringing uh, food to her husband who's in jail. Her husband's name is John Schultz and we see, again, we don't see her face, we don't see her action, we just see a thought bubble where John Schultz says, I hope that she baked the pocket knife into the, the apple pie, the brown Betty, like I asked her to. And she did. And so he was able to cut up his sheets and, um, spoiler alert, cut up his sheets and make um, uh, a ladder and, and climb out of jail. So he, he escaped from jail. Now, the woman is just a passive helpmate. We don't see her face. We see her back. Uh, John Schultz asked her to bake the pocket knife into, into the, the apple pie. All she does is serve, in the narrative, is serve the purpose of literally bringing him something for him to do an action with. And that is not true when you look at the source material from the time. Um, in 19, oh, excuse me, in 1869, Anne Schultz, the wife of John Schultz, so the woman whose face we don't even see in this um, book, was described as, quote, high-spirited, headstrong woman who played an important role in her husband's predicaments. She was a woman who, quote, gave proof of her force of character and her energy in the scenes of violence which preceded the fall of the curtain on the old era, end quote. This is uh, obviously a quote that was written not too far after these events as a way to pay homage to who this woman was. However, in Luna Royale's book, she's just this passive character. She has no energy. She has no anything. And uh, in fact, she was, she was the one that planned his escape, according to the source material. She was the one that smuggled things in actively so that he could get away. He was the one, she was the one that had a carriage waiting for him 
um, when he when he was able to sneak out of jail for them to go away. Even Louis Rael had re recalled that she was the type of woman that had to escape herself so she rolled herself up in a carpet and put herself on a carriage and that was how she escaped from these these actions that they were doing these illegal actions of of uh, getting him out of jail but none of that is in here not only that it's not only it's not in here it's not even her idea we don't even see her face The other way we see women is them holding back action. Now, Louis Rael was married. Uh, his wife, Marguerite, was either pregnant or sick. And he went back at least three times during the Red River, Red River Rebellion um, to check on her during the fighting, which to me demonstrates that he was really concerned about his wife and his children. And yet, the only time we see her in this book as this figure that says, Remember that you have a family now. You can't do these things. Remember you have a family and you're, you're not supposed to take these political actions. Only time we see her is this, this, uh, this shadowy figure that says, don't go. You have a family to think about. She was this she was this woman that held back action according to this book, but that is not true according to to Sigan's book, for example. Marguerite was a really important person in Riel's life and he he himself was concerned about being a family man during this time. And he was concerned about going and doing all these things because he did have a family at home. It wasn't Marguerite that was telling him to stay back. Instead, it was his own conscious about what it means to be a, a, a family man, a father, and a husband during this period. But we only see her in this as holding back action. And again, we need to really think about and deconstruct how we picture women and in history and ways that we can broaden this out. And then the other way that we see women, or in this case, don't see women, as completely absent. Completely absent. As I said, you only see women for about 20 different cells, those tiny little boxes. Uh, individual women, but you see women in group scenes um, across almost 40. So, 3% great. <laughs> um, in one particular case, we see this man coming to Red River, and he is very, very alone in uh, Chester Brown's depiction of this. When McDougal came to Red River, according to Lou Rael, he's just like literally standing by himself in like this empty, this empty small town. And if we go back to Siggins' uh, source material, that is not true. Chester Brown made choices to make him very isolated. In reality, 15 people traveled with McDougal across 60 different wagons. And this included four different children <laughs> and a woman who was pregnant and, quote, a gaggle of servants, uh, according to Siggins' words. Um, many of which we can assume to, to be women. So even though McDougal is shown in this book as being this isolated guy, there were tons of people around him, and yet Chester Brown made the choice to take women out of history. Or, when they're in there, to show them as passive helpmates or as um, holding back action. Red, the Red River Rebellion and this period in Métis history was primarily dominated by female kinship ties. Primarily dominated by women and women's families and we need to we need to remember that. It's not just the perspective of a cartoonist 
that excludes these histories. It's really all of our perspectives that make us not think about the importance of women of color, Métis women, Indigenous women in our Canadian histories. So in this short video, though it's a little bit longer than I intended, I hope I was able to introduce you to a couple different histories you can bring into your classroom even if you are teaching this or, or in complement to this as well. If you click the link, link below, I take you to um, a, a link to this article that I wrote about 10 years ago, but also some online resources that can help you with these histories. Um, and please let me know if there are other people in this history that we should really be celebrating because there are. Let's make sure that we name them and we talk about their really awesome accomplishments. So have a great, great week everyone. Happy uh, long weekend, February long weekend if you are able to take a break and we'll see you next week.